We've seen these idiosyncratic risks with EMs, not to mention jump of Treasury yields. So how bad has it been? It's been a really bad month for emerging market assets. I mean, when you look at the index for dollar bonds, they've basically halved the gains for the year. It's only 2.5% up for 2023. And then if you look at the currencies and if you look at the gauges for stocks, they're almost done wiping out the gains for 2023 as well. So, you know, it's August. You can argue that there's very low liquidity, that, you know, some people are out on vacation, not everybody's tied to the screen as they usually are, and that can exacerbate the moves. But for EM, it seems like the risks are coming from everywhere. I mean, it's dismal economic data from China, it's higher U.S. Treasury yields, elections in Argentina, elections in Ecuador, in Guatemala, and then you have shocking revelations like what happened last week with the Central Bank of Nigeria. They finally released financial statements uh, that were long awaited by the market and reserves for the Central Bank were much lower than estimated. So it's been a wild August. So that's what EM investors have been dealing with. Uh, what are they watching now? What's coming over the horizon? Yeah, well, the rounds of, of elections are not quite done yet. I mean, both Argentina and Ecuador still have to choose a president, and investors are going to be watching that. They're going to be watching for the actual election in Argentina, where a wild card candidate uh, came as the winner in the primaries last week, and they're going to be watching for a second round in Ecuador. They are watching Russia, where capital controls were brought back last week, and they're still keeping an eye out on Nigeria, where there's a new administration you know kind of trying to set the house in order and you know more surprises like the one we saw with the central bank may come